What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. We're back with the Tunalizer. If you did not know what the Tunalizer is, it is a tune analyzer or motor comparison device. It has a several other features that can be used as a speed control tester. There's a port on the end that you can plug your speed control in to do basic benchtop testing if you don't have a radio. It also has the OTA built into it so that it can do speed control tuning in conjunction with the HWLink V2 app. So if you don't have an OTA yet, and you want some more options for your tuning bench, this is a great option to look at. Touch screen, nice dial hill. We're going to get into all that in just a minute. But the reason that we're here is to carry on with our motor comparison series. I've been doing side-by-side -side comparisons of several of the spec motor turns. This week, we're going to take a look at the Just Stock 13.5. I have two examples of our Just Stock motors, and we're going to run these on the Tunalizer, put the data onto a spreadsheet, and do some side-by-side -side comparisons. We've done several of these videos, and I enjoy them because it gives us an opportunity to talk about some of the differences between the motor and the, the subtle nuances, if you will, that you might be looking for when trying to compare two different motors. So, pop the box open on these, pull the motors out. Oh, oh God, that's not good for it. And then uh, you take a look inside the box to show you what you get. You get a sensor wire, and you get your best friend in the whole wide world, the instruction manual. We're going to save these off to the side for now. I like to run each of the motors twice on the one cell test voltage. This guy does either one cell or two cell test voltages, and it can take a two cell to a four cell input actually. So you get nice consistent test results that way. It's got a regulator built in to keep the power the same as the battery starts to die. So we're gonna hook this up to a two cell LiPo over here with these power connector. All right, so once we get powered up, we can get into the screens. I had to shut the lights off, so it looks real creepy in here, but otherwise there's a huge glare and we can't even see what's going on here. So you can see our input voltage from our supply. I have it hooked up to a partially charged two cell. Uh, auto motor test, we're gonna show you that here in a second. That's kind of the, the magic behind the tunalizer. Uh, manual motor test, if you just need to do some quick bench top checking on a motor to make sure function is there, you can use that. It allows you to rev up the motor, hit the brakes in reverse that way. Uh, throttle output, allow it, it activates this external port that you can plug a speed control into uh, to do benchtop testing. And then this, we'll jump into the settings here. We'll show you it has different languages. You can change the brightness of the LCD, the number of poles of the motor, the test voltage as well. We're going to leave that set to, uh, as you can see here, 3.4. The one cell test voltage just keeps the motor RPMs a little lower. And then you can scroll down and you can reverse the rotation if you need to check a motor that's running in a backwards transmission vehicle. You can turn the beeps on. You can do a factory reset and you can check your firmware and all that fun stuff for the actual tunalizer itself. Now the tunalizer can test censored and sensorless motors from two poles to your heart's extent. It has a motor pole setting in here so that you can make sure that you get your RPM data right. Speed controls or tester devices, they'll read RPM differently based on the number of poles of the motor. So that is adjustable in the settings or when you go into any of the test modes, it allows you to, to set that as well. We're going to do this all in censored mode because the only way to get all of the information on the motor, the sensor offsets and all that fun stuff is obviously in censored mode because, you know, that's that's where they are. So we're going to set this motor up here. Mark this motor with one dot right there to indicate that's motor number one. So I got the motor connected correctly. I just went down to settings and poles to make sure it's set to two poles because this is a two pole motor. And then we hit auto test. It starts to run the motor. You hear the RPMs ramp up and down. It runs it at a couple different RPMs, some fixed RPMs, and then our test is complete. And we're gonna jump in here and see what it says. Test voltage, obviously it shows you that. It's fixed, 3.4 volts. It shows you the current draw, the KV, or what is the RPM of the motor, the measured overall end bell timing, and then you get the actual timing from the A, the B, and the C phase. And if you go down here, this is the fun numbers. End bell deviation is basically the difference between the sensors themselves. So if you were to do the math between those, that's the total difference between all of the sensors. The rotor symmetry, or asymmetry if you will, is how evenly charged the rotor is. The lower that number, the better. What this is saying is there's about 2.3 degrees of offset between the, the rotor's north and south poles. Uh, hall signal deviation. This is the difference that the unit sees in the strength of the sensor readings on the motor. And then we also get a temperature out of the motor because this hobby wing motors have temperature sensors in them. Not all of them do. So you may not get this number if you're testing a non hobby wing motor that doesn't have a temp sensor in it. But for the sake of testing data, because these numbers can change as the motor temperature changes, uh, you get that piece of information as well. I'm gonna go plug this into the uh, spreadsheet and we will be- All right, right so this is the same motor. We're just gonna run the test again for the sake of uh, data. I talked to an engineer once, he's always like, more data is always better. So hit the auto test button, it does its job. 
ramps up and down. And typically the numbers are gonna be pretty close to the same. They're not always gonna be identical because there's gonna be some variance because it's a very accurate device. But for the most part, you can see here, they're pretty darn close to what they were. So I'm gonna go plug this into the data sheet there and I will be right back. So that is testing complete on motor number one. We're gonna move on to motor number two, but before I do that, I do wanna mark it with two dots so I don't forget. All right, so we got motor two all connected correctly. We're gonna run, well, first let's make sure we're still on two poles. We are, because I, I unplugged it while I was messing around here. We're gonna run the auto test, and if you haven't done it yet on power up, it's gonna ask you. I was doing some bench testing earlier, so this is what happens on first power up. It'll make sure that you're on the right poles. You hit enter, it saves that, and it starts to do the motor test. And there we have our data, uh, 3.4 test volt, 3.95 amps, uh, 3,056 RPM. Uh, total MBEL timing is 47.2. You see the individuals A, B, and C there. And then we go down, we see we have a 0.3 deviation, rotor asymmetry of 1.7, and hull deviation of 1.8. So this motor on first test is looking a little better uh, just because those numbers are a little bit lower. We're gonna plug these numbers into the spreadsheet. Be right back. We are back. We are still with motor number two connected. We're going to run the auto motor test. All right, so see test voltage, current, RPM. These numbers all look very similar as they typically do, but sometimes they're not going to be identical. You do see some variances and uh, the motor temperature changes and stuff like that. So that is a normal thing. You're not going to be able to run the motor 10 times and get 10 identical uh, results. Uh, otherwise, maybe your device is masking some uh, numbers there. But, uh, we're going to punch this into the spreadsheet and talk about it. All right, so here is the magic spreadsheet, motor one, motor two. Motor one runs one and two, motor two run one and two. And you can see the numbers are pretty similar. There's a pretty small variance across the board. And what I'm looking at here is which one has this lower grouping here, because technically speaking, lower on this side or these group of numbers is gonna be better overall because everything's more symmetrical inside the motor. It's gonna run better. These overall timing degrees are gonna give you an idea of the differences, and but this does the math for you here. Um, this is something that I add, KV per amp or what's RPM per amp. I take the KV and I divide it by the current number and that gives me this value. And the higher the number is, it means the more RPM per amp that I'm getting and the kind of the, the better that motor is gonna you know, maybe perform, I don't know. This is a metric that uh, engineering, like I said, doesn't really like, I've mentioned it in other videos, but I use it as a very loose way to compare kind of information at a glance, if you will. So in my opinion, if I was gonna run these two motors, it'd be hard picked actually, because this one, while this looks better, I'm gonna get more RPM you know, per my given amp draw, so this might be a little better. We got, oh, you can see here the RPM values are, are slightly higher while the amp draw is a little bit lower. So that makes sense that this motor should be a little bit more efficient kind of overall, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna run better. So. This is just a good way to track your motor's performance. Another thing that you can do is keep a log of your motor like this, and then you can test it as you go through your racing and see if it's degrading or getting better or worse. Like if the magnet wears out, bearings wear out, stuff like that, you'll be able to compare you know, on your sheet right away what's going on with your motor. So. But that's the magical spreadsheet. And in this situation, I'd probably try to run both of these motors to pick which one is wet, better. But at a glance, the one doing a little more RPM and a little bit less current probably would be my pick. Well, there we have some side-by-side -side comparisons of two 13.5 just stock fixed timing motors. This is a way to simply and quickly compare two motors and see which one's better. And from looking at the information, there's a couple ways to look at this. Efficiency, um, my magical RPM per amp number, which some may, may, may or may not like, you take that for what it is. But overall, motor two, technically looks better because most of its symmetries are better. The, the rotor's more a little bit better, the signal deviation's a little bit better, the NBEL deviations is a little bit better. However, that motor shows less RPM per amp, which may mean that it's more inefficient or it may mean that it has more torque. Um, you see the main thing here is the RPMs are very similar, however, they had different amp draws. So that's where those variances are gonna come in. And 
I can't tell you which is going to be better. That's one of those deals where as you use this device to measure your motors and run the cars on the track, you're going to see how those numbers carry over to your actual tune. This may be an identifier, your RPM per amp number compared to the overall RPM and things like that. It's a real nerdy way to get down and add some data on all this stuff to see kind of what's going on. Now this is a, the spreadsheet that I was using is one that I made on my computer and you just take the RPM and you divide it by the amperage and that gives you that, that weird number. And I will say that when I brought this up, up with the engineer he's like that's not a great way to, to look at numbers because it doesn't tell you everything you're, you're just dividing two numbers together but for me it's a real loose way to have one more number variable to look at so I can say this motors rpm per amp number was this value it ran this way it's just a simple metric to get another point of comparison whether or not it's accurate or misleading I don't know it's another like I said just a comparison point so if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. We would be happy to help you out with some very direct answers. We do a podcast each and every episode. We give away a free Hobbywing combo. All you have to do to enter to win is listen to an episode. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. You can find it on your favorite podcast service. Uh, the quick, the stuff that we get asked often, this does not run brush motors. It does run non-hobby wing motors. If you run brushless motors that are sensorless, you're not going to get the censored information. Obviously, you're just going to get the amp draw and the RPM. It does do multiple pulls. Uh, let's. This has up to... Look at that. It just keeps going. 60 pole motors is what it tops out at. So. And as always, folks, thanks for tuning in. Another episode of The Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.